I suppose I grew up originally on a farm, and from there I went into a degree in engineering teaching. And from there I came into Westport, I studied the Green Cert, and then I got started teaching on the, the Green Cert program as well. Uh, the course, the level five, really focuses on the skills levels, about developing the skills levels that are needed for agriculture. We focus on the, the beef and sheep modules in particular. Uh, very important that students have the basic skills. You'd be surprised at the amount of students who come in and the basic skills that you expect them to have that they don't. So they really get the time to develop those skills and then when they go to work experience or go on Erasmus programs, they have those skills, which I think are essential. Our night school is quite large, so we're quite happy to have a successful night school here in the college in Westport. And we, we offer a range of hobby courses and certified courses at night. So the certified courses include, let's say, palliative care. Our agricultural program is quite large at night, so we have in around 200 students doing the um, course. It's an online course, so it's blend, blended learning. So they attend their lectures online on Monday and Tuesday evenings and then they come into the college to do their practicals and Saturdays and Sundays throughout the academic year. I teach the farming business subjects and I also teach sustainable farming. So really what I'm helping young farmers to do is to think outside the box and see what other types of enterprises they can bring. At the moment, it's kind of a funny scenario. You have beef plan movements, you have Brexit, we still don't know how that's going to end up. Markets are constantly changing. Uh, so I suppose farmers need to know what they're at. Um, we take the dairy farmers, they have expanders. That's due to the fact that they've been so clued in to the, the figures and uh, how their farm is performing. If you take suckler farmers, sheep farmers, they don't seem to be as clued in because it's harder to manage it. Well, I just wanted to further my education, learn a bit more and see where I can improve and get some pointers from teachers and places, you know, people with more experience than me, uh, just to get, you know, be able to get grants in the future and for the first five years I'll have a higher spec of 60% like and stuff like that so just to give myself a better footing to start you know it's better to get the education and uh, to help where you can get it. One of the main challenges that farmers would have in the west of Ireland I suppose would be uh, the weather plays a big impact on farming here in the west of Ireland and we are at the periphery of Europe so a lot of people think that we should be kind of more, I suppose, diversifying into forestry or alternative um, greening methods of farming. Well, at this point in time, there are almost 10%, if not more, of the Irish population are either vegetarian or vegan. So there is much, particularly with the younger generation, there's much less of an interest in eating meat. And while meat is hugely important to the Irish economy, and it's hugely important in the fight against climate change as well, Industrial agriculture has in fact caused huge problems for, uh, for in terms of climate change. It's a phase, like, it's uh, an awful lot of the vegans out there and that, like, if you actually go down and sit down and talk to them, they don't actually understand half of it, like, a lot of them be in the cities, they're listening to all this public media about, oh, cruelty, this, that and the other. If you came down to my farm in the morning, you wouldn't see any cruelty, everything is taken care of well. There is no such thing as animal cruelty, like really, like you know. Of course, things go wrong, and that happens. But like, they don't really understand. Like, they're just saying, "Oh, meat is murder and all that." But it's not really like that's the way of life. Like, if we kept all the cattle, what are we going to do? Like, <laughs> there's not enough room and dirt for all cattle and all the people. to be no, like they're on about stop farming altogether. Well, there'd be no such thing as going on the road and not hitting a cow or a sheep or something like that. Like, you know, it's pure nonsense. A lot of what they're what they're portraying, I think. Farms in the west of Ireland are very small, so it's very difficult to make a living from them. And therefore, other enterprises, it's really important that farmers become equipped to set up other enterprises on their farm, be it a pet farm, be it a smaller enterprise if it's even hens, that they have the confidence and the ability to do that. And also things like agri-tourism. Um, there is much more of an opportunity there to redo old outbuildings and have people to come and stay. Um, and I suppose from my point of view as well, as a horticulture teacher, growing more food is really important. Well, we've made a good lot of changes. Like We used to sell all our calves and try and go from there, keep a few replacements. But anymore, we try to drive for calf to beef, try to uh, kill our cattle under 30 months, uh, keep all bulls for killing. Uh, squeeze them uh, and we kill them as bullocks, like we don't like wolves in the farm. Like there's a lot of new exciting technologies out there and um, if you take the dairy farmers, they're leaps ahead. 
they're making use of the technologies that are there. There's no reason why the younger beef farmers, sheep farmers can't use the same technologies to try and improve their herds. It's a great shadow over farming that we're producing too much methane gas and I feel that will be critically going forward. I suppose that the biggest challenge to agriculture would be there's a lot of older generation and there's simply no one to leave the farm to. Um, so they're trying to do the best they can with it. It's all they know and if they give it up, they've nothing to look forward to in life. And farmers are constantly educating themselves, whether it's whether they know it or not, by reading the paper, or by going to marts, or by visiting shows like the Pound Championship. So um, this is just another area where farmers can, I suppose, it's more formal where farmers can come in, get trained up on new skills and new technologies. So things are changing and policy needs to change with it. There is a huge, agriculture is really important for us, even in terms of climate change. Cattle uh, manage the land, uh, cattle regenerate the land. The problem is industrial agriculture and the, the problems with scale and too many cattle. There has to be a balance struck. And that really needs to be uh, brought into policy in Ireland. Uh, and the policy needs to start reflecting the the need and the desire amongst people for less, less meat. In Europe at the moment, they're, they're discussing the new CAP uh, budget. They're not coming to agreement yet of how it's going to be spent. There's a, a big deficit there. And, and how they're going to get it across the line. There's a huge focus on the carbon footprint of the farms and how they can sequester carbon back into, in at a farm level and energy usage on farms and then we've also the methane coming from the cows. So there's kind of a three or four pound approach to it. Farmers usually are incentivized through grants to, to come up with these things and to come up with ways around and how to improve the environment. There are some really interesting developments happening at the moment. There is a group in Dublin called Farmony and what they have done is that they have re-kitted out old shipping containers and you've got a 55 metre space that is producing enough, uh, as much in terms of microgreens as you plant on five acres of land without using any pesticides. The energy that they're using is at the night rate because they run the lights overnight but this they could actually, uh, they can change this to sustainable energy. Um, and also that uh, container, it cost 80,000 to kit out and the turnover if they weren't paying for energy would be 200,000 per year. So it's very profitable. But there needs to be again more policy from a government level to be able to, to finance people like this to set up more of these kind of local enterprises. There's a lot of things like with, with the way everything's going, it's going to be all driven by environment and stuff. So maybe more sustainable farming as well and just try and keep everything going right. Well, in a lot of cases, it's the farmer. It's down to the farmer and the attitude of the farmer. Like, like on wet days, going out spreading slurry and make sure you know your buffer zones and all that. Like, and also the farmers, if they have to, to put it out, they have to put it out, which is fair enough. But they go out putting it out in wet days and it's just running into rivers and stuff like that, which is bad for the environment. Uh, in terms of cattle, like, just Try and keep everything like slurry storage is hugely important, runoff from festival to bales is hugely important, all that sort of stuff. If you've all them systems in place and they're right, you shouldn't be going too far wrong, you know. I think agriculture in the West will survive. Um, I'd hope it'll be stronger than ever in years to come. There is an awful lot of youth out there that are still passionate about farming. Uh, it's there in their blood, it's what they were born and raised with. They're not going to give up without a fight. Um, you take any of those beef plan movements that were on the protest, they were fully supported. Um, so I can see agriculture is strong. Uh, take likes and macro groups, they're still as popular as ever. So there is a lot, lot of youth there and they're passionate about agriculture and I applaud them. <laughs>